Hello everyone and welcome back to round 4 of our F124 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Japanese Grand Prix. I apologise, I might have got it wrong uh, at the end of China last weekend. It's odd, isn't it? Still Japan in my mind, I'm sure throughout the entirety of this game. Uh, it should should be at the end of the season in my head. But if you missed out on that video from Albert Park Australia, go back. Go check it out. It was absolutely insane. And, you know, I if I think, honestly, it might steal the show as one of our best races ever inside F124. But as we move towards the Japanese Grand Prix then this weekend, we've got a few more upgrades uh, that need to go on to the car. So hopefully we're going to see all of those go on, which is absolutely fantastic news. We need to spend a little bit of money as well. Are on trying to get some other upgrades for the okay, team. We'll have the new parts come through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. So as you can see here, we've got 1,800 R&D at the moment. But unfortunately, because we've just got a steady, you know, path of upgrades going through on the car, uh, we need to get to a point quite soon where we're able to apply multiple upgrades to each department. Luckily, I don't think that's going to be an issue today because uh, we need to spend all of our R&D on aero uh, and chassis upgrades. It looks like the front wing end plates is going to be the only other one we can do. So we're just slowly but surely trying to apply more and more upgrades to the car. Taking a look performance-wise, hash, v-carb, hash, has, and v-carb, sorry, uh, are just inching away from us ever so slightly at the moment. They are putting a lot of upgrades on their cars respectively so yeah we have got our work cut out in the early stages of this season of course the rule changes at the end or hopefully the rule changes at the end of the year might play into our hand but yeah formula one though back at suzuka this weekend let's hope we can try and get a good result uh could we quickly though no i'm looking to do fabrication upgrades uh, as soon as possible uh, so we need we need another nine hundred thousand dollars. Konnichiwa and welcome to a track loved by the drivers and fans alike. A place where so many champions have been crowned. Let's get practice started then here in Japan. Well, returning then here to the Ongshu Island for round four of the all new season. Once again, it's been a couple of days actually since I raced in this series, uh, and just getting a nice reminder of how sensitive the steering is. Uh, at low speed. Uh, I have upped the AI once again, obviously, understandably, uh, at the last weekend's result in Albert Park. Uh, so I think we are now up to 105 on the AI as well. We're slowly but surely bringing it uh, to that ultimate level. But of course, you know, we want to try and have a good fight, but a fair fight as well at the end of the day. But of course, yeah, this circuit requires a lot of downforce as well. So I'm intrigued to see how the AI take their setups this weekend. Um, and of course, first and foremost, we need R&D. But it seems like once again, they have smoothed out the bumps here at Suzuka just a little bit more game by game. There's obviously 130R never really much of a challenge. Yeah, the car feels odd uh, through that final chicane. Really still, I'm not a fan of that. Also not a fan of the idea that we got a red score on that first lap. So perhaps we need to take the S's just a little bit easier. Can our way out of the final turn though? There we go. That is going to be a purple score. Um, sometimes, sometimes you have got to cheese those a little bit and, you know, sacrifice a lot in some places just to gain it all back. Um, but 200 R&D is 200 R&D at the end of the day. Or trying to fast forward then through the rest of our free practice programs. Race simulation run. Uh, we say we've been able to do this one pretty easily as we've seen countless times before. Got to also give it credit, though. Suzuka, probably one of the best circuits as well inside the new game for kind of feeling how all the new physics work. You know, the car is really moving around underneath you. You can feel the camber a lot more through the corners as well, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Gives you a better understanding of sometimes what the car is doing uh, until you get into that Casio triangle. Yeah, I think, honestly, the best way to try and go through here for me is just avoid the curbs both on entry and exit. But, yeah, qualifying simulation run done and dusted. Once again, it is the maximum points. I'm genuinely staggered by just how well we're doing. Uh, oh, no, sorry, we only got the green score on that final one, which isn't good enough for Mark. Um, but I'm happy with that, so let's head to qualifying. This is a circuit where sometimes you see something truly exceptional behind the wheel. We've seen it from Vettel. We've seen it from Verstappen. It is a remarkable place to watch a car at speed. Welcome to Suzuka. We're qualifying 
for the Japanese Grand Prix. Yeah, big weekend for Yuma Oatsa with it being our teammate's home Grand Prix, but I'm hoping we can try and get the better of him once again. I believe, though, he... No, he hasn't out-qualified anyone. It was just we were waiting on that Red Bull behind us uh, to finish their lap time. Then Sonoda as well. So we have got two Japanese drivers on the grid. Uh, he'll be looking to try and get that V-carb car as high up the order as he possibly can. Um, but yeah, I've got no idea where we're going to find ourselves by the end of qualifying. What I do know is the curbs through this S section, incredibly sensitive. I've mentioned it before on a couple of occasions. Exit curbs are fine on this game. Apex curbs, not so much as I've left the battery on overtake all laps so far. So we've got no charge at all. This lap is officially a write-off. Yeah, that was a really, really stupid mistake there. We're one and a half seconds back of Yuki Tsunoda by the time we make it into the Casio Triangle. I guess it's good just to have the Delta time up anyway. That's probably the nicest Apex curb I've had through there. You really feel the car bottom out and squat on the exit of that final turn. And a 31-3 uh, is, is a long way off anybody. Well, often is the case in Formula 1 that after the highest of highs, you then often suffer the lowest of lows. I don't think we could get much better than winning last time out in Albert Park. But as we make our way then to start our final qualifying run, we were exactly a second off a of Yumu after the first lap. So we're actually going to remember to remove the overtake mode this time round. Or sacrifice a little bit of time in this first sector. But there should be a lot to be had on the rest of the lap there. It's nice and easy through turn one. Just trying to keep the car balanced and square and true. Maybe that'll explain why the car felt so sensitive over the curbs through here. Uh, it definitely feels better that time. You can see we are two tenths down. It's through the exit here and Spoon Corner I've noticed you really can carry the speed. Um, and yeah, even by the end of Sector 1, we're still pretty much even. First Degner, just a lift and down one gear. There's new fastest times popping in all over the show. And now around the rest of the lap, we're expected to find a whole lot more. Trying to make sure we use as much battery as we possibly can then down in towards these final few corners. But we are not finding the time at the moment. We might just be able to beat our teammate here. But I don't think we're going to elevate ourselves much further up. As we've got to try and get a nice line through the Casio Triangle. Clip the bollards on the inside. Not ideal, but use that battery pack on the run towards the line. We are going to be about a second up. But it's still last place on the grid. Qualifying wrapped up. We now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, I had not spotted that. Fernando Alonso on the pole here for the Japanese Grand Prix. A less than a tenth covering our top seven drivers at the end of qualifying there. We really have instantly got quite a decent looking title fight early on this season. Will he be able to convert it though as Max Verstappen will line up fourth place on the grid again? Um, but yeah, qualifying here in Japan is quite notorious. And after we were exactly a second away from Awasa, we have set an identical time to our teammate at the end of qualifying. If you don't believe the AI is well balanced, I don't know what more to show you. The other Japanese driver in Yuki Tsunoda will line at P18, so I think it's going to be a long weekend for them. Um, but hopefully we can try and move some way up the order as the race goes on. Welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix been away for a couple of years due to difficult circumstances but I'm happy to say it's now back at the heart of the F1 calendar. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Perez, Hamilton, Norris, Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Sargent, Joe, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Magnussen, Ricardo, Elwasa, Mr. Monaco, Albert, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, Let's head down to the track. And so we welcome you to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes alongside me for this race, and it's going to be some race, is Anthony Davidson. Things seem comfortable. They seem stable right now. That's a positive. But do they need to be pushed 
to the next level. But that's the thing, you know, as a driver, it's easy to feel like you're the individual, it's all about you, and, you know, you want to further your career the best you can, but you have to have the team hat on as well and play the team game, work with your teammate as best you can. It's not an easy balance to, to figure out. OK, we might be at the back of the grid and it's not the best place to start, but keep your chin up and push hard. It's Formula One. Anything can happen. Well, I'm loving Mark's enthusiasm as we head here to the grid. Um, but yeah, honestly, Suzuka is one of the most difficult tracks I find on the F1 game. There is no room for error around this venue. And, well, if you've ever come to any of my streams, you'll know that errors are commonplace for me uh, when I play the Formula 1 game. But, you know, hopefully by racing more, F124 is going to be the year where Matt stops bottling it. Let's do this thing, though. Japanese Grand Prix. We've got Albon and Ocon with grid penalties behind us. It is five red lights. And it's lights out, and away we go. Unless your name's Kevin Magnuson, they're both myself and Oasa. I'm going to immediately say thank you very much. Is Oasa going to try and look to the outside of his Japanese counterpart down in towards turn one? And we're going to try and send it around the outside of absolutely everybody there. Very brave move. Almost contact with our teammate who I don't think spotted us. We're going to try and get ourselves into a Japanese sandwich, which we will successfully complete. Sergeant there, and I believe that's Bottas side by side up the road. Logan Sargent seems to make a lot of good starts uh, in this game early on. It's heartbreak, of course, as well for Alonso. Pole position on Saturday, and grip penalties mean that he's way down the order come race day Sunday, and even further down the order now. Relegated to P13 then, so it is still Russell uh, that leads the way at the front of the field. Whoa, we'll go down the inside of Yuki, I guess. He wanted to turn into an apex there, but we said absolutely not, as I think every single car I've seen... Uh, is on a set of the medium compound of tyre. Trying to close in, though, on the Japanese driver. Don't want to make a move into Spoon. And, well, Yuki clearly felt the same way there. Happy just to go a little bit defensive. Uh, but gathers his car up nicely. But of course, the other thing I've always got to remember now, where, you know, where this game is still new, where I haven't played it too much, um, really, really difficult. You know, you've got to make sure you come into every single race with the mindset of conserve the tyres, be gentle with the car. Even just little front lockups will all add up uh, by the end of a stint here. It might mean the difference uh, between getting overcut or not. Um, of course, luckily, we are just about hanging inside the DRS range of Sonoda at the moment. But only just. Actually, it's going to be mighty close by the time we get through 130R. I do like the fact that DRS board now is a lot more prominent. You kind of know... Uh, where you're aiming for, as Russell still leads, but I think he's under pressure from Verstappen, who has now moved up his inside and into the lead of the Grand Prix there, I can see on the mini-map. Uh, but yeah, Mercedes, Ferrari, even Aston Martin, if he names Fernando Alonso, I think they can all fight for wins, and let's not forget McLaren either, should have won last weekend in Albert Park. Well, I guess after the highs of the last couple of Grand Prix, it was always going to have to come crashing back down to earth at some point, but it is so painful. We feel like we are working so hard at the moment and just losing time to Yuki Tsunoda. I cannot stress still uh, the importance of the DRS in this year's title, especially up against the AI. Uh, they really do just bunch together and pull away from you. Um, but yeah, I mean, the good thing is Awasa doesn't seem to be any quicker than me at the moment. Uh, so he's kind of acting as a bit of a rear gunner. Well, the AI seems to be able to get fantastic drive off of Spoon Corner. Here comes Owasa and Daniel Ricciardo as we're going to go side by side with our teammate through 130R. Very, very scary stuff though. I don't actually know uh, who picked up the DRS. As oh, Yumu gives me a fantastic squeeze. Good hard fair racing by the AI. I haven't got the DRS though. Has our teammate. Let's wait and see. I don't think he has there. It's three wide temporarily. Daniel Ricciardo and Kevin Magnussen will say thank you very much. As the AI is still three wide. Owasa cuts in and slams the door on me. I'm going to do the same to Esteban Ocon. And suddenly now, Owasa and I have gone and lost two and three places respectively. Well, I've only been following him half a lap, but I'm already concerned that Owasa simply does not have the pace uh, to keep up with Ricciardo and Kevin Magnussen here. He will just like stay in the DRS range, which I guess is good. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to have to try and move back past him on the run down towards turn one. The DRS, there is only one DRS zone here. Uh, but it still seems to be very, very powerful as over the Casio Triangle curves we go. They are not easy to navigate. I cannot stress that enough. 
Unfortunately, though, Owasa, of course, does still have that DRS. Are we going to see Ricardo duck out of the slipstream? No, he doesn't. That's not a reassuring message to get on just lap seven. We have shredded these tyres. Oh, I can see Ricardo down the inside of Magnussen through 130R. Of course, the wall's in the way. So you see him go through side by side and then no idea what the outcome is. I think, though, that means, yep, yeah, Oasa should have lost the DRS this time, man. So we've got to go for it. Got to try and get a run back on my teammate here. We've got, just got no charge at all, though. I really have used way too much battery early on. And we're again not going to be able to do it. As look at that, Ricardo. A brave manoeuvre down the inside of Kevin Magnussen. These two are putting on a show. But yeah, such a difficult circuit to try and find a good balance in this car still at the moment. And clearly, that is being showcased by the lack of pace that either driver has got there. Awasi, you can see, very temporarily trying to recharge the pack. Around the outside of our teammate, though, back down towards Turn 1. And that turn around, we are comfortably through. It might be a bit too little too late. Let's try and get back to Ricardo and Magnussen. Well, end of lap 11 then. Box pick confirm to the team. Yeah, these tyres definitely boxing slightly earlier than I wanted to. But certainly, yeah, these things feel absolutely wrecked. We'll try and get it slowed down. Which we just about do there. So, yeah, this is going to be a tough old afternoon. My only hope is that, well, Magnussen and Ricardo right now, I can see on the minimap going side by side, uh, that we can try and undercut them. And basically just try and hang with them uh, for the rest of the race there. Try and escape from the cars we were battling. It would be nice to see a Yumu not finish last again. That's the other thing. Um, but yeah, we've really, really got to nurse this set of hearts. So we'll try and take a fair bit out of them to undercut. And then I think if we can, we'll basically just sit behind Magnuson and Ricardo. End of lap 11, though. Magnussen has peeled into the pit lane then, as well as a handful of other cars. So are we going to be able to try and get the jump on Kevin, or at least are we going to be close to that Haas driver? We've taken a lot of time out of them, um, but I don't think we're quite going to be there yet. Yeah, Kevin Magnussen, who definitely closed in a load, but unless I can get inside that DRS window, this is not looking good. Well, one of those Red Bulls has opted to stay out at the front of the field. I believe that is Sergio Perez uh, that is going to get some laps led under his belt. Says it all this season, and even I've won a race, but Sergio Perez hasn't. Admittedly, it has only been uh, Max Verstappen and myself that have. I mean, what is that? The car behind you has just come in for the hard tyres. Car behind, running hard tyres. Such a weird handling model. 17.2 seconds. So had we not made that mistake, we might have been right there with Danny Rick as well. This race just goes from bad to worse at the moment. Oh, here comes Ocon. Nothing I can do. Nothing we can do at the moment. We've got to look after these tyres. Here comes Albon as well. Three wide into 130R. What is that? I was so lucky I backed out of that. I spotted Alvin just at the last moment there. We will slot back in behind Esteban. I don't know who's got the DRS. I am one of the lucky ones. And so has Alex Alvin here. But yeah, now we need to try and stick with these two. So Alvin, is he going to try and have a look for a move? Yes, he is. Ocon's going to go defensive in towards that first corner there. And Alvin with a very, very aggressive double overtake. He does make it happen. I'm trying to do the maths then in my head. We want to try and keep these tyres at less than 4% a lap. So far, we're averaging just under 5% a lap. So, yeah, we're just... I mean, the other big thing is I want to stay with Albon and Ocon at least towards the end of the race because, yeah, that gap to Magnussen is starting to come down. I feel a little bit bad for Owasso. We're running like a second a lap faster than him at the moment. And none of that basically is courtesy of my own pace. It is all just getting dragged along. By these two in front uh, but we will continue to be dragged along as much as possible because that seems to be the key this has honestly felt like such a quintessential japanese grand prix today of we have not got enough pace to match the ai they seem to just have that little bit extra down the straights um but using our battery strategically i mean i'm still not convinced the tires are going to be particularly fun right towards the end of this one we might drop out of the range Right towards the very end. But we are still pulling away from a Yumu. Um, yeah, the tyres, I mean, they should make it. But they're not going to look pretty. Oh, no. We've just lost the range to walk on just as soon as Albon gets inside the range of Magnussen and Ricardo up the road. You can see still they're battling. But are we now going to be in a real world of trouble? 
Not on that gap is still only one second. Come on, we can do this. These are critical corners in this Grand Prix, so we're going to have to really try and push on. I feel like I've actually been pretty good at keeping the hard tyres in check this afternoon. But we want to have at least some kind of fighting chance to get past at least one of these guys at the end of the GP. I think the other problem we've got as well late on here is how do we kind of move our way through? Unless Ricardo and Magnussen really battle side by side into the S's, it kind of seems like you can get close and the front car in a group can make a move happen. Everyone else though behind kind of just has to sit back and watch unless someone makes an error. So we kind of found it in Jeddah as well, didn't we? And I said that race... Uh, felt like a little bit of a chess match. Uh, Japan is certainly no different. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, this is a chess match. Well, I suppose as well, neither venue have really got much room for error. Uh, but round here, we are really, really struggling late on. Drain the battery just to try and hang in that DRS range of Esteban Ocon. It's going to be mighty close again by the time we get to the detection point. But we just, I mean, it was exactly a second. Are we going to be close enough? We usually gain a bit of time through here. Oh, you can just see how much we're fighting the back end. And again, we were exactly a second, and we don't get the range. Yep, that one moment, though, that one snap of oversteer, and the lack of DRS, I think, is going to be the difference maker. And the end of this afternoon... Oh, we cannot drop the car off that curbing, can you? It really does like to unsettle the balance. Three laps to go at the Japanese Grand Prix, and I guess, well, unless Magnussen and Ricardo go side by side everywhere... Just don't think we're going to get a look back in. Tyre warning light has flashed up as well with two laps to go. So any chance we've got has been completely evaporated here. Honestly, I think what I'm going to do, we're just going to box and we're going to go for a glory last lap on a fresh set of the soft compound tyre. I mean, we'll come out a few seconds back from Awasa, I think, but we hopefully are going to be able to get him uh, before the end of the race. Could we try and go... The fastest lap here. I mean, it's not about strategically trying to stop anyone else having it. Um, but, you know, it is for our own, you know, maybe maybe just help us feel a little bit better uh, at the end of another tough afternoon. Plus, if I don't get a Yumu, uh, then for the first time this season, uh, we're going to finish in a position that doesn't end in one. Because uh, okay, I'm slightly concerned by that tally. Perfect job from you and the crew there, mate. We're delighted with that. Right, Awasa. Maybe we're doing this for the Japanese fans as well. Receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross onto the track. Six seconds the gap back to our teammate now. Let's charge up the pack this lap. And we'll try and go for a glory run. Around in the final corner then to start the final lap of the Japanese Grand Prix. We're going to try and even use some hot lap mode as well. Haven't taken much out of a Yubu this time round. But let's see what we can do then. I believe though it might be George Russell. That looks set to take the victory here today, but can we try and snoop her away? I mean, obviously, we won't get the point for it, but if we could get fast, slap goes to showcase uh, that this car, despite being right at the back, has got a little bit of speed. Still the grip as well. I must admit, the high speed downforce, although it doesn't feel particularly realistic, uh, can still be quite fun around a track like Suzuka there. But through the final corner, George Russell is going to make it the second non Red Bull win in a row. Clearly showcasing that they aren't the dominant force that Verstappen looked like in the opening couple of races there. I believe it is still going to be the Dutchman uh, that is going to come through for P2 there. And it is still, at the end of the day, another Red Bull double podium. But as we try and close in on Ayumu on this final lap there, we went green through the first sector. I don't actually know what lap time we're aiming for at the end of this race, but we're certainly not going to get him sacrificed just a bit too much on our banker lap here but as we make our way through spoon curve they're trying to attack the curbs everywhere possible it has certainly been a fun race it's been a race where we've learned a lot as well still about what we need to be doing longer term in this game but yeah disappointing result for both of our drivers this weekend through the casio triangle though we are going to survive the japanese grand prix are we going to pick up the fastest lap point well not the point but you know what i mean as well are we going to claim fastest lap I don't think we did. Another action-packed Japanese Grand Prix comes to an end then. And a magnificent drive to take the win today. They led from lights out to the flag at the end. And their race victory was never in doubt, was it? Brilliant stuff by them.
Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who's joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we go. It is George Russell that takes the victory this weekend ahead of those Red Bull cars. And Oscar Piastri, well, P4. I mean, he's starting to rack up some decent results this season, seemingly getting the better of Lando Norris quite reliably there. Carlos Sainz in P5 ahead of Hamilton. Bottas in 7th in that kick Sauber car. Uh, and somehow Alonso still able to beat Lance Stroll. Uh, despite the grid penalties this weekend there. Leclerc picks up the final point. Uh, we are not far away from Logan Sargent being an F1 point scorer as well, which is a scary uh, idea of reality. I mean, he was only, what, six seconds out come the checkered flag there. No other major surprises. I wonder what Lando and Charles did. Did they have a crash with each other uh, or did something else happen? Uh, they crossed the pit exit line. Uh, so that's a very, very odd one. Uh, but both picking up a 10 second time penalty uh, at the end of the afternoon. Alonso as well, contact with Bottas, granted him a warning. Uh, just because I'm a bit interested, our pit stop times are pretty good, actually, uh, compared to a lot of the other drivers there. Awasa must have had a problem, uh, so must Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, but that means taking a look then at the driver's uh, standings. Verstappen now with a 28 point lead over his teammate there, as one over George Russell. We get relegated back down to P9, but we're still ahead of Lando in the Drivers' Championship there, and those kick Sauber's, if Bottas keeps scoring points, uh, I'm going to start getting a little bit worried as we head into the second half of the year. Constructors-wise, uh, well, we might end up just staying P6 uh, throughout the entirety of this season as well. There, Red Bull with a 49-point lead over Mercedes, who still are ahead of Ferrari. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we'll be back when Formula 1 returns for the first sprint weekend of the year. This time round, we're actually heading to Shanghai.